I need to calm down. There's like too much coffee in my system. I went to Whole Foods this morning and they were having customer appreciation day or some crap and they were handing out free coffee. And I mean, give me a break. Do you think I could turn down free coffee? I mean, let's be real. Okay. So maybe I drank a little bit too much. You guys. Today, we're rendering feathers. I want to mention a couple things before we get started. Number one, you may have noticed that I did not post last week. I had the week from hell, which included a migraine, which included camera B crashing several times, which included some other of my work stuff not being awesome. And then I had the trip to New York planned for a month already. So, you know, just... Things happened, and I wasn't able to tell you about it on YouTube because I can only post videos on YouTube, and I wasn't exactly going to post a video about how I couldn't post a video, right? So, yeah, if you want to keep apprised of my life and things, you're going to have to follow me on other social media. If you don't care, that's awesome. You don't have to. I'm not demanding that you care about my life and things, but... You know, I do post what's happening on my channel and whatnot on Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, and Facebook. And, you know, I post different things all over the place. You know, there's some overlap, but I post different things depending on what mood I'm in. So that's that, okay? Number two. Wow, so much coffee, so much caffeine. Okay, number two. <laughs> confession time. Mm. I've never done a feathers tutorial before ever. Mm. Now I've rendered feathers before and so I know how but I've never taught anyone how to render feathers before. First time for everything, right? So we're just going to fumble through this together. Hopefully you and I will both learn a thing or two number one let's go over the materials that i'm going to use today number one i'm using two different papers today i'm using the strathmore bristol uh for my marker and color pencil work today bristol is my favorite paper to use for color pencil work i like the smooth surface so that when i'm blending there's no tooth or texture of the paper to get in the way of my blending it's not really a favorite of mine for marker work because I feel like it soaks up too much ink, but I have so many things going on my desk right now. I'm just like, ah, forget it. Mm. For watercolor, Arches is my favorite brand of watercolor paper. You know, Canson also makes pretty good watercolor paper. Strathmore, the brown cover. Okay. But Arches is my favorite. This is hot press 140 pounds, which means the paper is really smooth. Okay. It doesn't have the texture and tooth like cold press watercolor paper. For paints today, I'm using the Holbein Artist Gouache set that I got in Japan. I've been playing with this ever since. I've been enjoying it a lot. And... You know, people always want to know what markers I use, what color pencils I use. And so I have a playlist for that called Different Media Materials. And you should go watch those individual videos on different media. You know, I always use a mix. Like I've got some Prismacolor markers. I've got some Copics. I got this Pantone Lectra Set one, a Koi coloring a brush pen. I have color pencils from Prismacolor. Uh, this is a Faber-Cassell Polychromos. I have this set of metallics from Karen Dosh. Also today, I'm going to be playing on my new porcelain palette. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I finally bit the bullet and you know threw down the change to buy this expensive, heavy monstrosity. And I played around with a tiny bit. And y'all, I'm mad. I'm so mad. I'm so mad about it. 
okay? You know, I'm mad. I'm mad that I have not had this in my life longer. I can't believe that it took me this long to bring this palette into my life. And I just feel like I've been depriving myself my whole life. And I'm so mad about it, y'all. I'm so mad about it. Yeah. I'm so mad about it. Rendering feathers is a lot like rendering fur. And when it comes to complete feather garments or like, you know, a big feather trim like collars or the edges of cuffs and stuff, there are a lot of principles of rendering feathers that are the same as rendering fur. For example, number one, you want to draw big shapes because feathers are often fluffy. Like you're going to have some garments where the you know, flatter feathers lay flat against the body. But a lot of the time, you're going to have like fluffy things. Okay. Fluffy things. Okay. Here's her waist. Here's the, you know, the outside edges of her feathers. And here are her legs down here. Okay. So draw big shapes. Feathers in clusters are denser in the middle because they're all sewn tightly packed together. And then they feather out <laughs> on the edges <laughs> they feather out oh I slay me one of these days I'm gonna get a sitcom laugh track in here to give my jokes the props they deserve okay I mean you guys all knew what a big dork I was right now number three Always render in the direction the feathers are going, growing, blowing, much like hair, much like fur. Like when you see something like this, okay, they're all facing downward. It's going around her body, but they're all facing downward. She's outdoors, and so there's a little bit of wind, so things are kicking up a little bit, but for the most part, they're kind of doing this downward sort of direction. When you look at something like this, her arm is picked up like this, and so her feathers are going down her jacket. Her arm is raised, and her feathers are going along with the movement of her arm. You have something like this, you have these really stiff feathers, and you're going to render in that direction. And then you have these tiny little, I think, ostrich feathers. I'm not really good at looking at feathers and being like, it's that animal. I should probably study that. I'm going to study that. These soft feathers, you know, they feather out. Oh my God, I'm going to keep doing that today, aren't I? <laughs> they feather out and you want to render in that direction. You're going to render in this direction. And then you have, you know, these coke feathers that, you know, they're in between, right? These are soft and fluffy. These are very stiff and definitely go in one specific direction. And then these... The feathers are stiff, but the center stem, they're soft. And so they, you can kind of like design the direction they're going in. Shadows and highlights should always follow the texture of your feathers. And this applies to every single texture under the sun. If you're, doing, if you're rendering a velvet texture, you know, your highlights and your shadows should be velvety. Okay, if you're doing something shiny and glossy like latex, your highlights and your shadows should follow the texture of the latex. Same thing with feathers, okay? You have all these teeny tiny feathers coming down. Your shadows cannot be big blocks. That doesn't make any sense, okay? Your shadows must follow this texture. When I'm rendering, if you are having a hard time figuring out why I place the shadows, where I place them, go watch my Making Figures Look 3D with Shadows tutorial, and I'll drop the link in the info box. Always, you're going to, when you do your underdrawing, you're going to lightly, oh so lightly, draw the outer shape of a garment. You're going to draw inside super lightly. And then you're going to have a broken line silhouette past your initial silhouette, okay? Because all of these things, there's nothing smooth on the exterior. Like these are kind of smooth, but that's because they're individual feathers. But when you have anything like this where you have multiple feathers, you're going to have a broken line silhouette along the edges. So your interior underdrawing is going to be super light and inside. And then you're going to render past that line let things feather out and bleed 
and have this broken line silhouette. So those are your basics. Go render. Oh, you want me to render some? Fine. Fine. God, you guys are so demanding. Okay, not really. <laughs> I'm going to demo things with marker, with paint, and with color pencil. You know, I can't render every single feather under the sun and with every media under the sun because then this video will literally be like six hours long and i know most of you are like oh zoe i really like your in-depth long videos yeah i get that but nobody wants a six hour video on feathers i promise you okay if you do there's something wrong with you i'm kidding there's nothing wrong with you you just really like feathers it's fine okay i'm gonna go over kind of broad general popular feathers um and then if there is a feather, a type of feather that you really need help on and you can't figure it out based on kind of the general principles that I go over in this video, drop me a comment with a link to a picture. Pictures worth a thousand words. Instead of trying to explain it to me, just post a link, be like, hey Zoe, I'm really having a hard time rendering this feather. And if I have a bunch of these requests, then I'll make a second feathers video later on. So when you have fluffy little feathers like this, my favorite way to approach it is to just use my color pencils. And I never zigzag because then I don't get that tapering effect. I want to push out to get it to taper at the ends and it's hard to do when you're trying to zigzag I mean I can do it because I've been drawing for as long as I have but it's easier to taper if you start at the stem of your feather and then taper out same thing with something like this you want to make sure that your color pencils are super sharp okay and you want to follow the strokes as well as you can. They're light, they're fluffy, and so you want to lighten your hand up so that you get the loose feathery look. You see how here I was making sure that my strokes were stiff and going upward, and then here I was just a lot looser and just letting my hand just flick out. And then when you have your stripped cock feathers. See these feathers actually are just regular feathers all the way down but they strip part of it so they're these solid feathers on these skinny little stems and so I draw the skinny little stems and then again I get in here and these are a little bit more compact and stiff like that. When it comes to markers, I of course prefer using a brush tip. And here's the thing. It's really hard to get this these skinny little things with a brush tip. These are okay. So these, I don't see them in the U.S. anymore under this packaging. But there are brands out there that have the third tip. You're going to need this super skinny tip. Or you can use fine liners in order to get these super skinny little feathers happening. But again, it's that same like really soft, wispy flick, flick, flick flick stroke. Honestly, even if for something like this, I'm using the marker, I will still like to go in with a little color pencil and kind of soften the edges up because I think it looks more feathery that way. Same goes for paint. You know, you can flick, 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 flick. But again, once the paint dries, I would like to go in with a little bit of color pencil and create these soft edges. 
I have a couple of oil painting brushes. They're super stiff hairs. And I use them for watercolor when I want to create a specific texture. So I really like these because I can get super abusive with them. I'm so precious with my sable. And then here I'm just like, ah, ah, squeeze the water out. And then pick up some paint as dryly as possible. And you can get these like super soft, like goose down feathers effect from it. Bing, 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 bing. And then this one also has that goose downy look, but more control because the brush is smaller. Okay, so always render in the direction it's going. Create the dry look. Okay? Create your feather shapes. Now, when I have really large feathers like that, all jam-packed all over, I will put in a little drop shadow so that you can see how the feathers are not a print, but large, pretty thick feathers stacked on top of each other to and for them to look more 3D. But with feathers like these, forget it, okay? You're not going to put a little drop shadow behind every little feather like this. It'll look super messy and over-rendered, and it's completely unnecessary, okay? If you have a big cluster like this, and you want to put a drop shadow behind the cluster, that works, but not for each individual feather. So let's render this. This is kind of a popular sort of look where you have an all over fabric that either it has real teeny tiny ostrich feathers all over the whole thing or some fake version thereof. When you are working on a project where it requires you to match your colors to a specific swatch, you know the drill, you go through all your stuff, try to find the best match possible, work under good lighting, test on the paper that you're going to use for your final, right? I'm going to get close. I'm not going to get perfect color matches because I have too many demos going on to go look for them. I'm just going to, you know, get kind of close, right? Here, if I were trying to render this swatch exactly, I would go for something more purpley, but I'm just going to do a cool gray scale for the demo. And you're going to need, whether you're doing this with color pencil or with marker, you're going to need several values of the same color. So for this one, I have 10, 30, 50, 70 percent cool gray and black. I have the same in the Copic markers. Here's the waistband, nice and clean. And then I'm going to draw very lightly the basic shape of the mini, even shorter than it actually is. And then feathers are going to go past all of that. With color pencils, it's easier to go light to dark. So I'm going to take my 10% and I'm going to lay down feathers everywhere. You don't want to just fill in the color. You want to always render in the direction of the feathers. And you want to make sure that your strokes are about the same length as these feathers like one two three four five there's like five tiers of feathers in there right and so you want to make sure that your feather strokes are short enough so that you get all five tiers in there and you know they're going downward and they're sticking out and yet they're a little unruly you want the feathers to look a little bit lively you know, they're very wispy. They're all over the place. I'm kind of exaggerating the volume a little bit because that's kind of how I like things. I like my fashion illustration with a touch of drama. And then I'm going to take my 30% and I'm going to do an all over feather look so that with the 10% and the 30%, we're creating texture without a lot of white space. You don't want a lot of white space because there is no white space. Eh. That's the thing about Prismacolor color pencils. The colors are awesome, but their leads are so soft that they break super easily. Kind of makes me bananas. 
Do you see how lightly I drew that pencil before and how you can still see it? I'm super annoyed by that. So eventually, if you're able to do this at all without drawing the base shape, it'll probably be better for you. That got a little long. I have to compensate over here. And then I'm going to start building my shadows. I mean, you can see how in here it does get super dark. So I'm going to take my 50% and I'm going to start putting in my shadows. My light source is going to be over here. And I'm going to go under each tier of feathers, constantly rendering in the direction of the texture. And then this side, of course, is going to be darker in general. And then I'm going to take my 70% cool gray and I'm going to punch up the shadows even more on this side. Okay. Throw in a few over here. Ta-da! Let's do some marker work. And I'm going to try to do it without drawing the shape. So again, I'm going to build up the color. I'm going to start with my number one cool gray. And again, I'm going to use the strokes of my marker to create the feathery look. And yeah, you know, I don't have something this skinny. And so I will be going in with color pencil later for a little bit of the texture because as I mentioned before, I do prefer finishing at the very least with color pencil for feathers because it gives me that dry feathery look that looks like feathers. <laughs> I know, I'm always making myself laugh, and it's like, look, if you can't even make yourself laugh, you ain't going to make anyone else laugh. Am I right? Okay, I'm going to feather out some more. Ha-ha. Keep your strokes really light. Do not scrub your marker on your paper. Again, I'm going to take my number three cool gray, again, using the brush tip, and just... A little bit just to create that texture overall with the two contrasting colors right and then I'm going to take my five my number five cool gray and start adding my shadows right along on this side a little more Notice I don't shadow all the way to the edge because I want to still keep those edges light. And I shadow about a third around. And then I'm going to shadow in between my tears a little bit. And then I'm going to take my number seven cool gray and punch out some of these shadows a little bit little bit and you could do something a little bit more subtle like I can get away with doing 10 30 50 70 with the color pencils because you can manipulate the subtleties a little bit more markers not so much so if you want to do like a, you know more like a 10 30 40 50 you know that could work too okay careful with your soft feathery strokes always and then i'm going to take my 50 percent cool gray and i'm just going to get in there and just add a little texture that's all a little texture make it look a little bit more like feathers with paints you know to get a gray you know how usually with watercolors, I tell you guys to take your black wash and then water it down with a lot of water and you'll get a nice gray. And yeah, that's still true. But with something like this, you want it to be gray, but you want it to be opaque. 
And so that is when I will actually mix black and white together to get a more solid, thick gray. So, I have a wet paint. I have it on my sable. But I pat away some of the excess so that I can have kind of a drier look. I'm not going to do the whole thing all over again. You guys get the basic spiel. Work light to dark carefully, layering the same color but in different values, figuring out where your light source is and placing your shadows. But here's my gouache. It's pretty wet, but I put it on a dry brush and then I kind of reduce some of that and so that I have a more dry paint on my brush. Okay, you see that? So that you're getting that texture. Let's do some boas. Okay, because hi, feather boas, right? So with feather boas, you have two kinds. You have the ones where you have a lot of feathers and they're curling all over the place, or you have the more marabou style where it almost looks like fur. So with this kind of thing, I would take a single color pencil and I would do a solid core. You can see that it is darker and denser in the middle. Okay, And then I would start lightening up as I got to the edges. And I would let them be curly and stick out all over the place. And I would fill in the spaces as I needed, but still keep that inside super opaque, right? I'm doing all of this with one color. I mean, I'm using carmine red here. It doesn't matter. You're ne you need to match your color. And then I will go in and you know, render a few of these individual feathers that are sticking out a little bit more strongly. Something like this. I would try really hard not to need to draw the outline. You know, you want your edges to be soft and broken, you don't want it to be perfectly smooth. And then you want your core to be denser and thicker and darker. And then I would take a slightly darker pencil. This is raspberry. And I would, again, put in the core, these shadows in here, but continue in the direction of the feathers. Always the shadows, whether they're in the core of the boa or along one side, they have to follow the texture of whatever fabric you're rendering. The beauty of color pencils is you can just blend so that you don't have any harsh edges. If I were doing this for real, I would you know, spend some time, make sure my blending is more beautiful, but we got things to do, so we're moving on, right? And then I would take a super sharp. I would sharpen this again. Pop those. Do you see how the little feathers are sticking out? So I want to do that. Do you see the difference between the two sides, how this looks like it has the direction of the feathers? Again, I like to use markers as the base because it does... It is a little bit faster than constantly building up from the color pencil, but I will add the color pencil later to get the softness in the texture that I want. So for this one, I would use my strokes to create the feathers going all over the place away from my center core. And never just fill in, okay? 
just keep building with your feather strokes. And then in the center with a darker, this isn't a great match, but for you, you would make sure that your markers are matching beautifully and constantly be working with your strokes to create the kind of boa that you want. And then I would take my pink and again, add in some of feathers. I mean, this is like a crazy boa and they're going all over the place, right? And you want that crazy, you wanna mimic that crazy going all over the place look. With this, I found it's actually easier to work dark to light so that you're kind of covering the dark and blending as you go. Don't make your strokes too long because that's not really what Marabou does. But you know, by overlapping these colors together, the darkness is dulled down a little bit. And yeah, I like the chisel tip for this because of, you know, the tiny little short little strokes that I like for this kind of look. And then, you know, maybe I'll go in and blend it out a little bit more with color pencil. And then really make those edges soft with the color pencil. So those of you who really need to know what colors I'm using, this is, uh, these are all Prisma colors, Poppy Red, Crimson Red, and Mahogany Red. And then color pencils, I'm using Raspberry and Poppy Red. And then with the pinks, I was using a Koi coloring brush pen in Lilac, XBR123, and the Letra Set 244T, and a Prismacolor Pink. But as you can see, it's not a great match, so I wouldn't put those together. So for something like this, again, you want the interior to be opaque, because you know usually you're gonna have a boa on top of clothing, so you want that interior to be opaque and then the edges to be soft. Here's the thing. Let's say you have a person and there are her shoulders there and then she has this boa wrapped around like this, okay? The thing is, you could paint all this to this edge and to this edge and then paint the boa. But because you have this feathery edge, you're going to have this white space or you're going to have a weird overlap. You don't want that. And so you have to opaquely cover this whole area. And that's, again, why gouache is my favorite watercolor to use for fashion illustration. So that because gouache is going to be the thing that's opaque enough where you can take your paint and push it in and cover whatever you need to. Inks aren't really going to do that. Watercolors, you know, it's really going to be gouache. And so, whoa, that's really wet. You really need the gouache to be super opaque and to cover whatever the hell's going on underneath. Something like this. I would use my crusty stiff brush and not use a whole lot of water, just enough to get the paint moving and really push out. And then 
again, you know how usually it's like you add less water for darker colors. Well, everything has to be opaque. So I'm going to add a little bit of black to get the darker color and get in there at the core and again, feather out. And then sometimes I like to stipple all over to get the texture as well. Something like this, I'm more prone to using a skinny pointed brush. This is a size four round. And like I did here where it's dry and feathery, but still opaque, you know, follow the direction of the feathers as they're going around the boa, right? And then on the inside too, just keep doing that. Don't fill it in all solid. There's nothing here that's like perfectly solid. All the shadows and highlights are created with the feathers and the feather strokes. And so you're gonna do the same, a darker, get in there and there's my shadow. Right? Oh, that's fun. And then peacock feathers. Okay. So let's break down one single peacock feather first, okay? I'm going to take this metallic copper Prismacolor pencil, and I'm going to first draw this egg shape. And then I'm going to take this Prismacolor Aquamarine and draw this kind of almost a circle in here. And then I'm going to take my Prismacolor Violet Blue and put in that funny Miss Pac-Man shape in here. Color that in. Color that in. This one... You want to make sure that you're following this direction. You know, your feathers are going in this direction. So I'm going to follow that with my pencil strokes. With the peacock feathers, you know, I would do this the same whether it's marker or with paint. I ordered these metallic Caran fan color color pencils. And they don't have color names or numbers you guys like they're all 1284 so that's definitely not the color name or number but it's this brassy gold color and i'm gonna put this ring here right peacock feathers you guys are kind of a weird thing at this angle, everything looks a little bit more golden, and at different angles, everything looks a little bit more brown, things look a little bit more green, depending on how you twist them. And so, you know, you go with the color palette you want to go with, because that's what's going to happen. If you do this and you choose to make everything look more green, that's still going to be accurate because on your garment at some point, everything is going to look super green. And if you want to go more brassy, that is also accurate because at some point all your feathers are going to be angled so that it looks brassy. It's fine. You know, sometimes I want to make this a little bit darker. I use my favorite Castell in, uh, what is this, brown ochre. And I make this ovoid darker. And then you're going to do all these feathers. I like to use the Prismacolor Metallic Gold first. Here's my stem, and I'm going to put all these coming off of it like this. I'm going to take my green, and I'm going to add a few of these, constantly going in the direction. Now, you notice that there's this ring around the ring, so I'm going to take my violet blue, and I'm going to give myself that ring around the ring. Get in there, make this one a little bit bigger. It does take up more space. Now, the thing that I wanna show you is how to put all these peacock feathers 
onto a garment. If you've watched a bunch of my videos, you know that my favorite way to scale things down to a garment is to use your hand, okay. the palm of your hand. So I would lay this peacock feather on my hand. Notice that the ovoid fits right in the center of my palm. The whole like kind of top of the feather like is about the size of my hand, okay, where all the feathers are the densest before we get to the stem. If I had a mini skirt, and let's say your hand, your croaky hand, is here and is about that big, then the ovoid is about this big, and the feather is going to be about that big all around. And so now that you have the scale, I would kind of lightly drop in how I want my peacocks feathers to overlap. So again, I'm going to take my aquamarine and put in my half ovoid shapes. And yeah, these can all be a little bit irregular because, hi, they're organic, they're feathers, and they are all going to be slightly different from each other. And yeah, you know, the shapes don't have to be perfect because when you get to a small scale like this, it's okay. Like if you're an illustrator and you want everything to be like the most perfect ever, yeah, slow down and spend the time. If you're a designer and you're really all about putting the basic design of the peacocks in there so that people can tell that they're peacocks, this is fine, right? And then I would take the brown ochre and fill in the space. I would take this bright gold. I kind of want that separation to show up, so I would take a 4B and really put in that separation. Ooh. And then I would take my gold. You could do this step with a gold gel pen too. I think that would be really pretty. And put in those feathers. And yeah, they're gonna overlap on top of each other. That's okay, because that's how you designed it, right? And yeah, you're going to see some of it stick out in the silhouette, of course. Drop me a little of that grass green. And then again, that violet blue. And then with this one, the edges are like almost purpley and they're like super overlapping on top of each other. And, you know, you can do that too, where all the little feathers are just kind of falling all over the place. Okay. And you could do that with markers. You can do that with colored pencils. You can do that with a combination. You could do that with paints. Although I warn you now, if you want to do that with paints, you have to wait for things to dry in between steps and that can get a little bit tedious. And so, you know, you want to be working on like one layer of the peacock when you're painting and then like work on the top and then come back and do one other step of the peacock and then do the face and then, you know, like that. So you're saving time while you're waiting for things to dry. Okay. Oh my God, that was so much information. I feel like, wow. So, how was my first feathers tutorial, guys? Leave me a comment below. You know the usual drill. Hashtag practice, not magic. Hashtag always be practicing. Check the info box if you have any questions. If your answer is not there, leave me a comment below. And uh, again, after all this, and you still really cannot figure out how to do that one feather, drop me a link with the picture. Okay, that will really help me out. And uh, yeah, you know, share, subscribe, like, all those beautiful things. And uh, I will see you next time.